Hey, Bobby Manning here. Welcome to the Garden Report. My finale out here in Vegas with A. Sherrod Blakely. He'll be sticking around for a couple more days with the Celtics. Unload on the Warriors, beat them pretty handily here. Shorthand effort without Matt Ryan, Sam Hauser out as well, and strong efforts all around there. Not a ton to talk about on that front, but big conversations today. Brad Stevens, Malcolm Brogdon, as well as Danilo Gallinari introduced back in Boston. We got to talk with Ime Udoka here as well during halftime. So we continue talking about the additions to the Celtics. We've talked about Brogdon quite a bit at this point, the Marcus Smart implications, all that. Uh, boop talk about that some more but Sherrod was interested in Gallinari I don't think we've talked enough about him so we might as well do it 40 percent ish shooter from mm -hmm. three most of his career a guy with size a guy who can get his own shot off right. from a variety of areas and a guy who's been in the league 14 years at this point what do you think infatuated the Celtics uh, about him and vice versa because he did take more less money to come here yeah well he's a guy that the Celtics have been longing for for quite a while so the fact that when he officially became available and the Celtics kind of pounced on him is no surprise for Gallinari and then he touched on it in his uh, presser he's at a point in his career where it really has to be about winning you know he was asked to, he was reminded about that 10 three-pointer game that he had against oh the that Celtics. was insane yeah and you know his, his thing was you know it really wouldn't have mattered if they would have lost that game and that's kind of where his head's at he truly is about winning at this stage because there's not a whole lot he has left to prove we know that he can score we know that you know he's at 6'10 not only does he have the ability to knock down threes as you talk touched on but he understands the value of bully ball. If he has a 6'4", 6'5", guy switched out on him, you don't have to tell him to look for his offense. He's going to do that instinctively. And having a guy that can get you some buckets around the basket now uh, from the post, uh, along with the guys that they already have on the front of the perimeter, it's the best case scenario for the Boston Celtics in terms of having the kind of depth that can get them over the hump on those, some of those nights where you know, set perimeter shots aren't falling, but you got a guy that can go around the basket and get some, some action that way. His consistency is pretty astounding throughout his career as a shooter. A, a guy like that at $6 million, I think you love that. Overall, though, I, I like the signing. I don't love it. I like it. I don't know how much better you could have done at wing. I didn't love TJ Warren and some of the other options out there. So he wanted to be here. You could get him with that mid-level. I'm not going to argue too much with it, but I do see some shades of, and I hate to use this name, but Ennis, re refreshing in a way because he's a guy that can go outside the line and reliably hit shots, so you'll love that he can do that. Like Ennis rebounded and did some things on the interior that were a little refreshing after the Celtics didn't have that for a while. Mm -hmm. But the defense, not great. No. no. No, but the, the one thing about him, though, that is a little bit different is that he has the ability to score not only at the basket, but also from the perimeter. Whereas Ennis, if you take him basically 8, 9, 10 feet away from the basket, he's going to have some issues. So his, the, his versatility from an offensive standpoint, you're hoping can mask some of his defensive deficiencies. But, you know, again, it, it, they, they talked a little bit about this. He, he's played primarily the three and four his career, but he will play some small ball five, which I think is a great look for him because at this point in his career, He's strong enough to where he can, I think, physically hold his own against a lot of those small balls. I'm surprised hitters. by that. Yeah. Ime did say he's going to play some five. You yeah. think he's capable of it? I think he's capable in certain matchups. And, and with, when you put him at the five, it really has to be a matchup-based decision. It can't be feel of the game or flow. It has to be, you know, with, with, if you're playing a team that has P.J. Tucker at center, then, yeah, you absolutely can play him at center and not be hurt significantly, if at all, by that. Makes a lot of sense that it's been quiet on the big man front if Gallinari's going to be able to fill some minutes there. Grant's done it in the past, and of course, Luke Cornett's back on the roster. I was waiting Nothing for you to but praise. Luke, Bobby, what took you so long? Nothing but praise for Luke today from Brad Eme. That was encouraging to hear. So the he'll grin be on Bobby's face, yes, he was very encouraged. Behind the Zoom, yeah, I was, I was smiling at my computer this morning. Uh, here's what Brad had to say about the Celtics going smaller in general this year, which Gallinari is uh, going to be part of them being able to do here. How do you kind of picture filling that spot? I know Luke's back and you got some extra roster spots here. Yeah, I mean, we'll continue to look at, again, what, what adds to our team. Um, you know, I think ultimately, you know, though we though we started big most of last year um, with Al and Rob, we we oftentimes would play one of them. I think, like I said earlier, we're we're better set up to play quote smaller um, than we were just because of the size of these two guys sitting next to us, um, and got a lot of different options there. But um, we were really high on Luke. 
Uh, we've been really high on Luke. We thought he had a, a terrific G League season and, you know, think that he can step right in and be a, a, a passer um, and, a, and a ball handler and a mover and a screener and a roller um, when need be. And we'll probably add um, one more person uh, that can play in that area. But, you know, we're, we're really believe in, in Luke as, as not only depth to, you know, obviously fill out the roster, but also be ready to help us and help us win. Um, you know, I think he's at that, at that stage where he can do that, but we're still looking and we'll still add at least one more body, um, you know, at that, whatever we call the five position nowadays. So this roster is super versatile. You think of Brogdon, he's going to be able to bring a ton of versatility to off ball, on ball. You got Gallinari playing across the wing and inside, and Grant does a similar thing. This roster, the interchangeability is really exciting, and I'm sure Eme yeah. can't wait to get to work with that. That's it for us here in Summer League. I'll be back in Boston. Shroud's holding it down out here as the Celtics play one more Summer League game against the Grizzlies on Friday, so stay tuned for that. We'll have some coverage at home as well as a Garn report, which we haven't done in a minute, uh, talking Summer League and all the moves and all the reaction to it here on Celtics All Access. Appreciate you following along. As always, brought to you by Calm. Calm.com slash garden. Go get 40% off a premium subscription, yoga, sleep meditation, uh, bedtime stories. It's all there, and there's going to be something for you if you go over there and get it. Uh, Frey Sherrod Blakely, Bobby Manning, Kwani Lunas, who helped us out here on the road as well. Uh, shout out to her. And, of course, check out all our content at clnsmedia.com. New A-list podcast out on the CLNS Media YouTube channel. And we'll be back in Boston doing the Garden Report soon. We'll see you back there.